So I have a new raycasting update and this time it's something called generalized shape cast. And what they generally allow you to do is, as shown as in this little preview right here, you can raycast essentially with a mesh part. Here they are saying that they previously released the block cast and sphere casts. I've also made videos on those as well as visualizers for them, but they were essentially being limited to block and a sphere, where the shape cast allows you to do way more. And here is the API. It's basically the same as just casting a normal ray in the 3D world. Except you are giving the part that you want to cast. And this part is a base part, so that means you can also use meshes for the ray cast objects. So let's jump into Studio and I'm going to show how to make this example that's shown right here. But actually before I go into Studio, first I need few shapes. So when I'm in Blender, I can just add some meshes, like let's say the torus. Then a different one, like a maybe something more complex. Where was it here? The torus knot. And then another one from maybe extras, like the teapot plus. So I'm just going to export these meshes and put them inside of Roblox Studio. Okay, so I have these three meshes right here. And let's also add some parts and maybe a terrain that's going to be the environment that we are going to test the shape casts on. So I can have like a ramp right here, make sure it's anchored. Actually make sure everything here is anchored. Then I'm just going to add few like pillars and then also generate some terrain. Okay, so I just have this like rock right there. And now let's get to actually scripting this example. So let's add a script inside of the server script service. And I'm just going to move it on the side right here. So first I'm just going to show how to use raycast or how to use the shapecast. And we simply do so by doing workspace and then shapecast. Because workspace is the word root and it uses the shapecast method. Then this method takes the different parameters. There is the part, direction and the raycast params. And this function also returns a raycast result right here. So you can assign a result variable. And okay, firstly let's get the mesh part. And let's use the torus for now. Then the direction we'll calculate later. And let's also get the raycast param so the object isn't going to hit itself. And we create the raycast params by using the raycast params and then the new constructor. Then we want to do params that filter descendant instances, which is equal to a table of the instances that we don't want the raycast to hit. And as shown in the example right here, there is the main mesh and then another mesh which works like a visualizer. So we also need to create that mesh. And I'm going to name this one cast object. So this cast object is going to be the object that we are going to cast from basically the torus. And we want to put the cast object inside of the filter descendant instances. And we basically want all of the ray casting and object moving happening all the time. So we need to get the run service for it. This will allow us to make a function that's going to run every frame. And the event we are going to use is going to be the heartbeat. So just to run service heartbeat connect a function. And then I'm going to take the result and put it inside of this function right here. So the first argument that we need to give is the part. And this is not going to be the cast object, this is going to be the mesh. Since we want to be casting the mesh from itself and the cast object is, like I said, going to be used as a visualizer. Then we need the direction that we need to calculate. So we can do local direction is equal to, and this is kind of a tricky part. Because if we, let's say, get the look vector of this cylinder, the look vector that is going to return is going to work on the z-axis. And since this cylinder isn't basically rotated like this, it's going to cast the shape at its position right here. So going to get its y-axis, and we can calculate that from a method of a C-frame by doing mesh.cframe, and then use vector towards space. And this method returns one or more vector free objects rotated from the object towards space. And that's what we are going to use for the direction. And if I go to the move tool and go to the local axis by doing Ctrl and L, you can see that the axis that we want the mesh to cast is going to be the green one. And by looking at this box right here, oh that's the wrong button, 
the green one is the y axis. I don't know why I typed in 2 in there, but anyways. So we need to give a vector to this method. And we do so by vector new, and we need to fill in the value on the y axis. So it's going to be 0, then minus 1 because we want to cast the object downwards, and then 0. And this direction is going to be the direction that's related to the mesh. So here we give it a direction, but we also need distance because we want to give it a distance of how far the object can travel. So I can have a local variable named distance that's equal to like 20. And to limit the distance in which the object can shape cast, we do direction times distance. And then we also give it the params. And now we need to move the casted object that's going with the shape cast. So we can do cast object that C frame is equal to, and here I'm just going to do a ternary operator, depending if you have the result or not, which is going to be result, and then if you have the result, we want to do mesh that C frame times C frame that new. Because like I said, we want to move the cast object relative to the mesh. And the only position we want to move it in is going to be the y-axis that's related from the direction. So it's going to be 0, then the minus result that position, and 0 again. And just for formatting purposes, I'm going to add a return right here, or maybe there actually. So the cast object C frame is going to be depending if we have the result, and if you have it, it's going to be the mesh.c frame. And if we don't have it, which means I'm going to use the OR, we also set the mesh.c frame, and this time is going to be plus instead of times, and then the direction times distance. So if you don't have the result, it's always going to move at the max distance. And I can just hide it back here again. So right now, if I do a run test, we should have a cylinder that's going to it's going to not work, and that's because it was supposed to be result that distance and not result that position. Anyways, it should work if I do a run test now. And we have the object right here. And of course, if I try to move it, it's not going to work because it's gonna go to the same position right here. But if I move this object, this one, which is the cast object, is going to follow. And that's because we are casting the cylinder downwards. So if I hover over the spawn point, you can see it going up. And same if I go up the ramp right here. And if I move it up out of the distance, it's going to give an error, because I did distance time distance for some reason. This was supposed to be direction times distance. But anyway, if I move outside of the range, it's going to follow like this. And like I said, it's going to be relative to the object's orientation. So even if I orient this object, you can see that the shape cast is going to also position this object like this. And it's going to be the same if I, let's say, rotate it on the ramp like so. Okay, let me just hide the script so it's more visible. So overall something like this is great, right? But if this is a torus mesh, right? It's going to project the torus, and it's not going to work like the sphere cast or the block cast. It's going to behave differently because it's going to have a hollow center. So if I move it on one of the pillars, it's basically just going to go through like this. Same with the singular one right here, and same with the terrain. And you can see that it's going to work even if I rotate it around. And it's also going to work on these meshes that I'm going to also visualize. So even though it's casting a mesh, it has a pretty accurate collision detection. And let's also change the mesh in our script to be the mesh teapot, let's say, instead of the torus. So I'm going to do a run test. And here is our teapot casting. 
and it's also going to work properly. Like here you can see that even the handle is giving a result right here. And it still works on the terrain. And also when we are at it, if you didn't want the teapot to cast from basically the bottom, to change where the object is being casted from, you do it in the vector towards space direction right here. Here is going to be casting from the bottom because I set the minus y inside of this vector. If you want to cast it from let's say the front, you can give it a positive value on x right here. Okay, maybe not positive but negative value. So it's going to be minus 1. And here you can see that it's being casted from the top now. Or the front rather. And it seems to be giving some weird results. Oh, and that's basically because you also need to change the cast object C frame. Instead of it being on Y, it also needs to be on X. So now it should be working properly. Yep. And it in fact is. So you need to change the vector inside of the direction and also in the cast object result. And there is also this more complex node that I'm going to use right now and do a run test. So right now it's touching the teapot, but if I move it out, it's going to be fine. And here I'm going to show the detection on the pillars. You can basically see how accurate it is even though it's a mesh. And it's going to be the same with the terrain. And thank you for making it to the end of the video, for that I'm going to tell you that there is going to be an uncopy locked place, this exact one right here, linked in the description below. It's going to be placed right above the hashtags at the end, so don't miss it out. But anyways, that's basically going to be everything for today, and like usual, if you found this tutorial informative, then please leave a like. You can also become a channel member if you want to support me and get access to the benefits on my channel and my Discord server. But yeah, that's going to be everything for today. So thank you guys for watching and see ya.